Charlie, we ready? Yes, go okay, proceeding. Uh, Steri, request of the board. After consulting my client at this point, we're requesting that this board make a decision on our application. Okay. Um, since the application is located in the historic district, uh, council will have to prepare written decision. What we'll do is close the application for that written decision. Council will have that prepared. Uh, I can't promise the next meeting because of the substance and the information has been provided, but within the next uh, two weeks. Thank you for your time. Uh, no, that, that two weeks is the next meeting. Yeah. I said within the next two meetings. Oh, two weeks. Oh. Meetings. Oh. Um, nothing further from the board. Motion to close for written decision by council. Make a motion that we close the application for MN Court or um, on North Main Street for written decision by our council. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next application, please. Mm -hmm. State of John Poster at 328 Gin Lane. Uh, for the applicant, my name is John Bennett, and with me this evening are Bailey Larkin, another lawyer who works with me in my office, and also Stephen Bedford, who testified before. Um, this is uh, about a property at 328 Gin Lane, and it's been in was in the Poster family uh, prior to any designation. John, yeah. uh, uh, oh yeah, please, because I want you to hear it all. This house was in the, uh, this property was in the Poster family uh, prior to uh, any designation uh, and prior to the creation of the Village Historic District. So I, I bring that to the board's attention because it's not a, this is not a person who went and bought a piece of property uh, in the Village Historic District. This property was owned by the family prior to any designation. It's on the south side of Gin Lane and it's improved by uh, a carriage house, a tennis court, and a pool. Um, and this is uh, formerly, it was formerly an accessory structure, excuse me, to a home known as Windbreak that was destroyed in the hurricane of 1938. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that later, as will Steve, but um, I, I do want to touch a little bit on the, the history of it, uh, as will Steve, of course, because um, a fair amount of independent research myself. Um, the this house is not visible from the public public road. It is not visible from the public road. Your village uh, building structure inventory form states uh, exterior visible from the public road. No. Um, I looked at the um, and that's Exhibit A. We also looked at the um, the John is it visible from the ocean? Yes. Mm -hmm. The roof line is. The roof line and the chimney. Um, these, uh, we also looked at the national, the village nominating documentation, and that's Exhibit B. Uh, and there are probably 200, 220 homes that have been photographed as part of that designation. You will not find a photograph of 328 Gin Lane uh, in that designation. Um, so it is not visible from a public road. Um, but the right of way. Well, the right of way is not actually defined in the code. Um, and I'm also going to talk to you about other decisions where you have, even where you took jurisdiction, you took into account the lack of visibility uh, from a public road. And I also do have, uh, as Exhibit C, I took photographs. These, some of these were taken by a uh, professional photographer who works in my office, and some of them were taken by me with my uh, Proud owner of an iPhone S. What is it? 6S. Okay. Somehow, thank God I have children around to show them how to use it. Uh, this is a photograph. You're actually probably 20 feet down the driveway to the road, and you, you can't see the house. And this, these other photographs are photographs which are great because they were taken with the leaves off. They were taken this winter. Uh, they were taken just about a week ago. Uh, maybe some of them were taken before that. How many feet back is this? Excuse me? How many feet back is this? How many feet back was I when I took this photo? No, how many feet back is the structure? Oh, the structure is li literally sitting in the dune. Um, so what you have is you have 
significant hedging, a tennis court, a couple of copses of trees, um, and not only near the front of the of the uh, right of way, but also in the middle of the right of way, both behind and surrounding the tennis court. And um, you know, I I spent a lot of time uh, in the estate area as a kid. Uh, not as a resident of the estate area, but working on houses in the estate area with my dad. With my dad, and I will tell you that I we I probably worked on 80 percent of the homes in the estate area. I don't even remember this home, and the reason is because it doesn't never really ever really form a, a you know a part of the sense of the place of the village because you simply cannot see it from the road. Can, you can see the roof line and the chimney from the um, if you if you if you're at a certain point. Uh, at the ocean. And let me see. I think Bill, you had a shot that was taken from the dunes. Yeah, no, just from the dunes. Taken from the dunes. You just had one. Very helpful. I'm sorry. Give me one second. I should have had this at the ready. It was the poker shot. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. 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 Of how limited the visibility is from the dunes. It's not a head-on shot from the dunes, but you can see from the ocean. But you can see there's a significant dune. It actually sits in the dune, and there's a significant amount of vegetation above it. So its visibility from the, from the ocean is quite limited. But again, even if you were to take um, jurisdiction, one of the things that you do look at with uh, applications of this nature is the the visibility of the house, because that, of course informs you as to what effect on the balance of the historic district the demolition of this house would have. So for example, um, in the um, McKnight applications, uh, which was uh, the teardown of like this, um, and of an accessory structure to an existing, to a, to a house that was uh, taken out in the 1930 hurricane. Oh no! Yes. No. 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 That 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 was that wasn't taken out. It was a former accessory structure on a different lot, on the old, old Wooldorn Manor House. But but in, in McKnight, one of the things you did say a factor in this application is the obscuration of the buildings from a public right of way. <coughs> so again, and as a matter of fact, I, I I ask you if you were to drive down, coming around the corner of uh, of. Uh, Gin, as you're about uh, to, you went, you know, you, you all know the corner where if you went straight, you'd be in Agawam. You come around to the old um, uh, Camuto house, which, um, if you look um, into the property, you can still see those McKnight two accessory structures, although you've given the, properly given the uh, authority to tear them down. But you can see them from the road, but they are significantly obscured, and that's one of the reasons. Uh, why uh, you granted the ability for the owner to tear those down. Those homes are even more visible than uh, from the road, from than the posture house. John, is this a contributing structure? Uh, it, yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. So, again, it was the former accessory uh, cottage. Um, and it's an accessory, and that's important because in the application of the estate of Granville Walker, this board reviewed an application for demolition of a former carriage house that was converted to use as the primary residence at 450 Gin Lane. And the board noted the subject building was an originally, ex originally an accessory structure, and such structures are evaluated by different criteria than a main residence. Um, the estate of Granville Walker did um, deal with a, a house that was a, con a contributing structure. So that's, that's, that's important. Um, now, one commentator, Ms. Spanberg, who I, th I think is still in the back of the room, has opined that the building was designed by Grosvenor Atterbury. Um, that's just simply not the case. She says in her work that uh, it is a claim of doubtful merit, which to me means there's no proof. So what I did, I have a fairly extensive uh, collection of books regarding uh, local architecture and history. I, I, I look through all the um, subject matters, uh, source books that I have. I look, took a look at Peter Penoyer and Ann Walker's uh, monograph on the work of Grosvenor Atterbury, and there's no citation. The building is not included uh, as a structure or work of Atterbury. I took a look at the Spinoza books. There's no attribution there. Um, uh, you know, these sometimes in the village, these um, Atterbury and Stanford White, it reminds me of a, a client uh, that I once had that said, 
who's a um, um, art collector, and he said that all the, uh, I think it's Corbert was the artist, he said, you know, there were only uh, 100 of them existent in the world, and 250 of them are, the United S are in the United States. So everybody was very quick to call something an Atterbury or something, call some, something, somebody a, something a Stanford White. Uh, there's, there's no proof whatsoever this is Grover, Grover Atterbury. Uh, <coughs> and uh, Steve will talk to you more about that. Um, there's really no proof that this house was related to some significant person. Uh, uh, Mr. Taw, who was the owner of the main house, was, I, I don't have to say this other than he was just <laughs> another rich guy. Uh, his brother happened to have been the guy who shot Stanford White. His brother. If anyone has seen the movie Ragtime, Evelyn Nesbitt was, uh, was uh, Stanford White's lover. And uh, when she married Taw, the owner's brother, and he found out about it, he shot Stanford White in the head. That doesn't, he never lived there though. <laughs> so it's such a like page six, um, you know, sort of titillating uh, but useless uh, uh, comment about the house. Um, and that's the only connection, uh, pained as it is, to some historic uh, figure. Uh, it was never owned by uh, Taw's brother. Uh, and even so, uh, Tall was, as I say, just another rich guy. And the main house uh, was, was taken out in the 1938 hurricane. And again, this was just an accessory house. Um, Mr. Bedford es estimates that 50% of the exterior of the accessory, this accessory carriage house has been replaced by an insensitive treatment that has significantly and irretrievably altered the building's appearance. But I'll let him uh, talk more about that. Steve? Oh, thank you. Well, it would be really helpful if you could go to Exhibit G on this latest thing, so you can see. Uh, those of you who haven't visited it, I assume nobody visited. <laughs> no, I think they all. Oh, you've all we, visited. Yeah. Okay. We do our homework. Oh, good. Nice to hear. Um, we do our homework. Oh, oh, oh. Well, <laughs> as you see from, from the structure, <laughs> it's a, um, <coughs> the ground floor is a pebble-washed uh, concrete block, that, uh, pebble, as, pebble aggregate acid-washed concrete block. Now the, and the upper floors are, is a, um, just very briefly, is a, um, well, it's the second floor. There is only one upper floor, which is on the eastern side of the building, which is a, a sort of modification of a half timbering that uses um, uses broken uh, clay tiles, broken roof tiles set in a kind of cement or grout matrix and reinforced with, con re with reinforcing bar and then most likely attached directly to, again, concrete block. Um, the, obviously it's, uh, I, can, I don't know how far you want me to go into the individual descriptions, but, um, could you explain to us, I mean, um, sure. just to try to get to the finish line a little quick. Yeah, I know. Because the proceeding would be, um, it is in the historic district, right. it is contributing. Right. So the major the issues are. Thank you. Um, are ones of are in both integrity and structure. Okay. Uh, integrity in the fact that this building once had uh, lead uh, lead window uh, excuse me lead casement windows, lead pane windows, and uh, those were uh, recently removed and replaced with large uh, single light windows um, that give it. Uh, the appearance of what one of my former professors used to call orphan Annie eyes, um, sort of blank open space, and a large percentage of the, of the walls is glass. Um, second, you'll see that Steve, the. Steve, if I may, I'm sorry. If you could, com if you compare the, the contributing sheet mm -hmm. to the part of G, I photograph the, the windows as they exist. So you can actually see the, the changes. Sorry, I just wanted to point that out visually. If you look on the first uh, first photograph, which is the 
which is the elevation facing south. Um, you'll see that the double door entry with the uh, fake colonial uh, <laughs> windows does really does the building no justice. Um, but if you start punching all, taking all these holes out, you suddenly realize that a large percentage of the elevation of each elevation has been replaced and detrimentally replaced and in a manner that would be, um, and I don't want to get into hardship, but that would possibly be, Im might, might imp be impossible to replace. Uh, second is really the, um, the in unfortunate choice of materials in relation to a saline environment. That essentially what has happened, you can see it best on the first photograph on the upper level, is that those nice clay, uh, those nice tile panels, what's happened is you've got, you've got uh, water or at the very least sodium, uh, sodium chloride penetrating the tile, penetrating through the grout, rusts the, uh, rust the rebar, and it, uh, called rust jacking, and it pops it out. Uh, and in order to fix this, we essentially have to take the building apart um, because you'd have to take each panel off. You basically have to, and we have to take each panel off. And then the next step is that this has penetrated into the house. So we have water inside the house. So that you would have to, even if you wanted to make this, the interior <coughs> impermeable, you would have to take off all of this, put lay in some sort of impermeable, ba of some sort of barrier, put them back on, and that would be pretty much impossible without losing them. Um, you can, now, if you can, uh, this sort of destruction of the concrete uh, by the salt is is that is that uh, your your uh, professional opinion, or is that based on? activity you've done in the past in terms of preserving or restoring a historic structure. It's, structure such uh, as if in my past experience, I have found this. I worked on okay. uh, a large number of concrete buildings with, in, that have been inset with, uh, with metal casements. So um, you're saying that in, in, for, in, in the form of a preservation project, mm -hmm. that this couldn't be done in a manner that would, in fact, maintain the current aesthetic design and historical significance. Without complete reconstruction. So you're saying replacement. Replacement. And the well, you could which is not preservation. Which is not preservation, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure he doesn't jump out of the Right, right. I'm, I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for Zach here. Seize up and... I'm waiting please. for Zach. All right. So, um, okay. I, I understand what you're right. saying. From a preservation standpoint, right. I would say that there will probably be a few people who would probably. I, I realize there are people who would d disagree, but disagree I think if that? you okay. if you look at if you spend some time with a structure, you'll say, well, how do I, how can I remove something that is attached to a concrete wall? That is something that is, will be virtually impossible to replicate, namely these this this correct this tile matrix, and then insulate it or put a vapor berry on it and put it back on, I think you'll, A, you'll lose a lot of integrity and B, you won't get it right. And if I may, this is not, understand, this is significantly, this is not a the hardship part. This is the fact that... He it hasn't said anything about it. I have said no. He's, yeah. the, he's I mean, being delivered in this. You train yeah. him well. Okay. Uh, delivered in this. <laughs> I didn't train him. He's good. <laughs> and equally important is, the you know, every, every opening is... Is, uh, has been visited by the Anderson Anderson man, so that do um, you know when that was done, Steve? Uh, it's hard to tell, but it was. Remember, this this property was uh, right. in the family prior to its designation as a historic uh, structure. Were they, was this done prior to the designation? Mm. I have no idea. Well, the photograph. Uh, the, the, well, these the windows seem to be fairly new. Exact, exact, exact. Excuse just, me. I'm talking. Yeah, but you don't know. John, you, you can't do I'm, a, I'm I know asking. what you can't do a timeline because the photographs were taken prior to the actual enactment of the historic district. The 78 photograph. Yeah. 
Right. The photographs predate the enactment and establishment of the historic district. Okay. What photographs? The photographs on this, the chart? This, this one. Yeah. This on the survey form. Before, on the survey form. This is before the establishment of the district. How many years? Let's see, 79 to... 77 to 79. So it'd be some, sometime between 79 and, and the... In the 80s, at least a year or two. But I think that the, the windows are certainly newer than that. Well, I'm just wondering if somebody improperly alters a, uh, if they were done after the designation and they were improperly done at that time. Yeah, but we don't know that. That's what I'm asking. I have no idea. I have no idea. All right. So that's unknown. Right. Uh, the other issue is. Um, there is one other uh, cut on the uh, northern elevation that uh, the central entry, you can see where the concrete is different, where they've cut a door into the wall to actually uh, is behind that is a, is a very small galley kitchen. Um, but that, um, though it's what I'm basically saying is that there are some issues here that I don't know how you can solve without basically rebuilding the building. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Not right now. Zach, you haven't had the opportunity to do a report on this. Uh, do you feel that you need that time? Most definitely. Okay. All right. Um, much reasonable. Assuming the public is on the next. I just assume it's much. So any public comments on the application? All right, uh, first time seeing the application, Zach has to do a report. Um, as to your own uh, presentation, it is a contributing structure within the historic district. Uh, so we do need to do a, a fir firm and thorough evaluation to see uh, what the recommendations are of the board. Uh, therefore, you're allowing this board to do so. Please. We're gonna request the board to adjourn it to prepare that information. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn. I make a motion that we approve the applicant John Coaster at on Gin Lane request to adjourn to our next meeting. Is there a second? I second All the in motion. Favor? Aye. 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 Next application, Aye. please. Next application is David Cardelli, 414 Hill Street. See the applicant present. Yes. this? These people also need to be We are able and capable, unless the board feels there's a portion, they can have a uh, conditional while they're out of the If there's something that alters that process, uh, we'll mention it as part of the reference. Okay, of thank you. Yes, they did. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and council. My name is Alexandra Halsey Storch. I'm from Toomey Latham Shed and Kelly, 51 Hill Street in Southampton, for the applicant in this matter, um, David Cardali. Um, before I give my presentation this evening, Mr. Cardali asked me to bring to the board's attention um, an email correspondence that was sent by Mr. Broadleaf in his capacity, apparently, as a member of the community to the ZBA uh, board, um, which Mr. Cardali believes to be in violation of his ethical duties. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to submit the email, um, uh, but I could read it into the record if necessary. Um, but I would request that Mr. Broadley recuse himself. Do you uh, have do you have a copy of the email? I do have a copy of the email. Do you, um, that you can submit tonight yes. into the record? Okay, so uh, Antoinette, if you would receive that into the record, uh, is your request just verbal tonight or are you going to substantiate it or embellish it with a letter? Do you wish to? Um, yeah, I guess we could we could follow up with a letter. Where one do you, is a week enough time to do that? Yes. All right. So why don't you then attach copy the that to the letter and please give the board the full context of your request sure. in the letter. And, and Thank if you. I might make one one comment, um, 
the ZBA, like the Architectural Review Board, does have public hearings. Uh, and in that email, uh, I did not make reference to the ARB. I did not speak on behalf of the ARB. I spoke as a resident of the village, so I was perfectly within my rights to do so. I was sensitive to the fact that I do serve on the board. You have your privilege or right to make that argument, but I would duly submit to council that as a citizen and voter in the community, at any public hearing, you, anybody else, can comment. And it doesn't prejudice us against using our good judgment, which we have to do. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, and we'll okay. follow up with the letter. Um, all right, so now on to the more substantive aspects of this application. Um, as the board may recall, when the application was before, before the board last month, an adjournment was granted to give the opportunity the board to, one, visit the property, and two, consider how the requested demolition might impact the streetscape. Um, in an effort to assist the board, my client has submitted um, a packet uh, that outlines the neighboring properties and has many pictures um, of the properties, and um, I think you will find it helpful. Um, there are three factors that the board must consider when determining whether to approve or disapprove the application. Uh, the first factor, namely that the features of the properties which make um, a, a significant contribution to the character of the of a landmark, landmark or historic district shall be altered as little, little as possible, um, is not relevant in this application. Uh, this is a not historic and non-contributing property. Hold on a second. Is that true? That's true. Okay. Mr. Student Roth stated in his demolition evaluation that this home does not exhibit any features that embody the disting distinguishing characteristics of its architectural style, and a demolition permit may therefore be granted for this house. The second factor, namely that any alteration shall be compatible with its historic character, as well as with the character of nearby properties, is not applicable. The applicant does not seek to make alterations. He seeks to demolish it. The third and final factor states that new construction shall be compatible with the character of the nearby properties in the historic district. When considering the principle of compatibility, the board must consider the general design, the character and appropriateness to the, the property of the, of the proposed new construction, to the scale of the proposed alteration of new construction in relation to the property itself surrounding properties in the neighborhood, and three, the texture materials and color and their relation to the similar features of other properties uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, at the prior meeting, the board didn't raise any objections to the proposed structure, uh, except that Mr. Brady asked whether Mr. Cardali would be amenable to what he called beefing up the molding in the front of the proposed home. Mr. Cardali readily agreed to this, and revised renderings were submitted accordingly and the board should have copies of this. Uh, moreover, the proposed structure, which is a colonial-style home with federal characteristics, does not negatively impact the streetscape and, in fact, is compatible with the other homes in the area. To assist the board, Mr. Cardali submitted pictures of the 15, 15 homes in the neighborhood that have either a similar style or similar characteristics to the home that he proposes to build. Uh, the scale of the proposed new construction is consistent with the homes in the neighborhood. The other homes in the neighborhood, as indicated in Mr. Cardali's application, are between 7,258 square feet and 2,300 square feet. Mr. Cardali's proposed, uh, proposed home is 2,950 square feet. And we hate to get into what's going to be there. This is not an okay. application All for right. that particular All right. structure. So, so then I will, I will just... Uh, I will end there, then. and if you have any questions of myself or Mr. Cardali, who is here, then I, we will do our best to answer them. At the last meeting, we had asked for the immediate streetscape, which is the right next to this structure. I didn't really see that in the in material that you submitted. Uh, you my understanding of what was asked for in the last meeting was um, how how a demolition would would affect the streetscape, not for an actual streetscape. And I believe the pictures 
to reflect the surrounding homes? The immediately surrounding homes? Yes. One, yes. I'm David Cardelli. Yes, I know you time? are, Mr. Cardelli. Hi. Uh, it was my impression that we asked for a streetscape of there was not no specific just a request. potpourri of um, houses in the neighborhood. Well, there was no specific request for a streetscape. I submitted initially uh, photographs with the initial application, which has my direct neighbors, and then because of the discussion at the last meeting, uh, whether the house would fit in with the scale of the district, I took more pictures, more detailed pictures of houses up and down Hill Street near my house, including the house to the rear of me, uh, and houses on my block across the street, uh, which is that app, that app uh, booklet that you have. Right, so in answer to your question is yes, you have photos of the houses directly next to me. On both you do. sides? Yes, absolutely. And behind me. You and across the street. I looked at it today. Okay. Um, just talk about some of the changes you made from the uh, previous application to the front. Um, you have that in front of you? Hold on. Curtis, were you discussing the house that's going uh, to be built? Well, yeah, because, it, yeah, because you know what, uh, Council, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. Uh, first things first. And the streetscape isn't going to do any good if the house is gone. But this, the, quest, the question was, was it a contributing structure within the historic district? Okay. Well, Therefore, it's already been determined by a historic consultant that not only is it not, um, but he made the, rec the recommendation that it should be and can be and is uh, uh, capable of being demolished. Correct. Therefore, based on that, the uh, certificate of appropriateness to demolish it would be obviously granted as an overall application process. Right. We've already determined that's a right. possibility. But I don't understand that. Is this an application it's also both. for the, the new house? To demolish and construct a new, new uh, uh, single, uh, I'm sorry, uh, two story structure. So it is, in fact, uh, a simultaneous application okay. for the certificate of appropriateness and to construct new construction. Right. I'm sorry? Well, that had not been determined that it was a, in, with regards to the differences between this application and a prior application that came before us. This application has been identified a non-contributing structure within the historic district. Therefore, would that be, and uh, by uh, historic consultants, recommendation, no issues, nor recommendation uh, for uh, them off this property was, uh, would have no issue be granted before this board. Therefore, we're able to move forward on looking and reviewing the application mm -hmm. as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Actually, no. sorry, he's got a dual application, That's so correct. you're just in the second phase, but I think that the board has yet to make a decision on the demolition issue. Okay. Board members, um, one of the requ requirements of this board is to review the application based on the certificate of appropriateness on whether the uh, structure can be demolished per our historic consultant. Um, it is not a contributing structure. Um, um, his recommendation is that there should be no uh, uh, issues of this board um, to require them to do any type of uh, alterations or to salvage or do uh, uh, restoration of the current structure. Therefore, what are your concerns about their certificate of appropriateness? Do you have any issue? <coughs> yeah, yes, I do. Um, re recently, the village uh, conducted a planning workshop in which uh, an, in an inventory was taken of the different structures in the in the village. And this particular house, which was qualified as a, a bungalow, there are less than 50 in the village. So this house represents a style of building uh, that is particular. Uh, it may not be. Uh, omnipresent in, in the village, but it is a particular vernacular of building style that was relevant at that time and in the village today and as it is on the street right now, especially when you put it in the context of the streetscape next to uh, 420, I think it is, which is a similar size bungalow. Um, and the two of those houses are almost a matched pair. So in terms of the demolition, uh, I would like to see the house preserved, therefore I would not uh, vote for a demolition. Susan? Well, at the last meeting, 
the neighbor who had the similar bungalow appeared. I don't find the picture of that house in here for some reason. My initial application has photos of my neighbor, uh, Ms. Post's house. Okay. That's my initial application. This, I, this I voluntarily did as a result oh, of the discussion okay. we had and as a result of actually uh, Mr. Okay. Bradley's email. I figured let me show the rest of the scale of the neighborhood because I thought I it would pass certain it. issues. So okay. I just wanted to take photos of many houses that are colonial style. Right. My okay. house is much smaller than all these houses. Um, listening to the arguments that were before the board tonight, I'm under 3,000 square feet. And I think uh, one mm. of the fellow neighbors but pointed square to footage is irrelevant. Okay, but okay. pointed to a house, I think 465, which is in my packet. Um, my house is very similar. It's a colonial style house. And it, it does fit in uh, with the scale of the street, with the neighborhood, is harmonious with the other houses. We're, but we are discussing the demolition of the yes. bungalow style house. Um, I'm not, there's 50, approximately 50 other houses. Right. This is a modest bungalow. They are it, modest. That right, is this the is nature not, this is not in a, a resort a, community th uh, at a certain period at the turn of the century when people built these smaller houses. And your house sits in a particularly smaller, a small lot in the streetscape, if you don't mind my saying, calling it a streetscape. Um, so I have concerns about knocking it down also. Christine. Um, I'm just looking at the report that Zachary gave and uh, it doesn't meet any of the criteria t for preservation. Um, so I think it could be demolished. Thank you. We're gonna uphold the integrity of the process. The process states if it's in the historic okay. district, if it's not contributing, then you have the, the right to move forward in uh, when this board has determined it not to be a contributing structure within the historic district then it it it, it does uh qualify for you to uh demolish so therefore i have no issue issue is there seems to be a standstill and we are missing one board member so um at this point procedurally we don't have the necessary um uh, agreement to move forward with the presentation of your initial or your continual application because we haven't determined whether the certificate of appropriateness has been or will be granted for the demo. Uh, demo. If, I, if I can, um, and I know Mr. Studenroth is here tonight, he wasn't here last time. What is the purpose of having a historic consultant? If no, he said it, he, um, he, no, no, he agrees no, with no, you. No, no, I, I know the report sure. um, and, and I've read it uh, several times, but for the board and I've listened to the earlier arguments throughout the night, if we have a designation by the town the historic consultant, is that his position? He's a hired consultant for right. the village of Southampton. But then we, the board members take it at whim whether they want to decide with it or not. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing it to Ms. Stevens and Ms. Broadley. I don't understand that. As, that as, that's what I'm asking. Uh, if we have an expert in the field right. who makes a designation on, on the property. He doesn't make and, the and designation. It, well, about well, it doesn't meet the criteria. The, the five criteria, I'm not on the registry. So I have a not historic house, not a contributing house, but I am in a historic right. district. So I'm making my case to Ms. Stevenson and Ms. Right. Broadleaf um, if they can reconsider, because we do have. Uh, he, right. he, we have different jobs, really. I think you would agree that he is a historic consultant, and we have a, a job to having to do with the neighborhood and how, the, how, how your house fit into it. And so there is a difference, I believe. Otherwise, you could just have Zach. Yeah, well, which isn't bad. And he's good at looking at stuff. I, I, I just, I just <laughs> question the board on taking that position. Right. Um, I would uh, request the board to analyze the code as it reads, the requirements of the code. And if you're determining that this house and using phrase phraseology such as the current house fits within a, uh, a, a the vernacular of a of the historic district for that community and for that area um, I'd be very care cautious because it has not been determined by any means and any measures that we have currently before us that it does so therefore um, if you are able capable or wish to justify your answers mm -hmm. Um, do so so we have a complete record. Right. I, I, so, well, I, so, I'm asking what is the right. criteria? I don't know if you have you know, architects or have well, historical no, you backgrounds. Had, you I, asked, I don't know. You asked uh, a general question about the role of a consultant. And in earlier life, I was a consultant uh, for major corporations. 
we were viewed as experts, and the CEOs of the company, uh, or whoever it was we were advising, please let me finish, uh, would hear our thoughts, listen to our research, listen to our conclusions, uh, and then it was up to them to take that information and make a judgment. And as I said earlier this evening, we're a board <coughs> of town residents who make judgments within the uh, context of, of the code. So again, Zach was looking at it from one perspective, I'm looking at it from another perspective, and we all come together on what we think is the right thing based on the level of judgment. I'm concerned with the limited number of this style house and the disappearance of this style house. So I take Zach's information into consideration. I take your information into consideration. I take your attorneys into consideration. And then we make our best just judgment. And that's the role of a <coughs> consultant. And that's the role of somebody who sits on this side. You don't have a vote to move um, uh, forward with the presentation as a stance. So I'm just asking, Mr. Brady will vote next time or he votes well, independent? He would, well, Mr. Brady's um, testimony or his uh, the uh, interpretation um, would be heard when he's present. Uh, uh, so this, has, this would have to be put over to. Uh, it, this with asking. regards to moving forward with the application, I'll see if there's right. any public comment. Uh, but with, with regards to moving forward with the presentation of what you proposed, uh, yes, it would have to law. Okay. Um, as I am an attorney and, and I'm used to procedure, so I, I would like to hear Susan Stevenson's reason on it, as I just heard Mr. Broadleaves. I thought I explained that before, that, that these two, these bungalow houses are are part of the streetscape of Hill Street <coughs> that I think are valuable and that it would be disrupted if you knock down that house. Is there any public comment on the application? Yes. So, oh, okay, before okay. I, we go, go to the public. So we, I have two no's, two yeses, and we have to wait for Brady and it will be put over for consideration. Is that? That's the way you want to look at it. Right. Well, there hasn't been a vote, so there can't yeah, be a no yes. or a yay. What's that? There hasn't yeah, been a vote, so there can't be a no or a yay. Right. Okay. You have favorable and you have unfavorable. Hello. Good evening. I'm Candace Post, and I live at 420 Hill Street um, in the little bungalow house that you've referred to, and I appreciate uh, the survey of how many are left, because um, we're, we're losing so much of our character in Southampton. I know we've, we discussed this at the last meeting as well. Um, and, and I appreciate your concern for this. And I do recall that um, the board was concerned with uh, the style of the house that is going to be, they're proposing to replace this charming bungalow house that is currently there. And I recall you um, mentioning that. Um, and perhaps you said perhaps even they could push, um, add on to the back of it. And there, there were a number of options that were given. And I think um, we were expecting perhaps some resolution going more in that direction. Um, but I, I guess that has not been put before you. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had no dinner <laughs> and I can barely think. Um, <laughs> How do you so, think we feel? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Uh, um, the house that Mr. Cardali is proposing is a pretty much is, is, is like a box. It just goes straight up. It doesn't seem to be. We're not determining the, or, or we're not moving forward on what's being proposed. Oh, you're not. We're still in position. Oh. Uh, it has been re recommended and discussed by council, not only on this particular application, but obviously on the prior, that we look and determine whether uh, we will move forward with the certificate of appropriateness before analyzing and making this and, and entertaining discussions on what we'll be replacing. I see. Um, can I bring up another, um, another matter? Um, I understand that it is within your purview um, to, uh, sorry, 
there is all this stuff. Um, let's see. Bear with me, sorry. Um, section 65-4, Certificate of Appropriateness. Um, also, um, uh, alterations, um, and I believe that uh, trees are also um, w in this uh, mm -hmm. article yes. or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Mr. Cardali cut down all the trees, uh, the very mature trees on the property line on both sides of, of, this, of his property. And I have pictures of what they look like as of October of 2014 and what they look like as of the 1st of April 2015. Um, I also have, uh, let's see, now this is, this first picture here is, is from my side, uh, from 420 Hill Street, um, and at the very bottom. Well, before we proceed, is this, she's is asking this a question. Is this, all right. This has to do with the certificate of appropriateness. Uh, procedurally speaking, trees uh, and any type of landscape should be approved before this board before you execute, so it is relevant. Um, th there's a picture that's folded under that looks like that's is what happened what I discovered on April 1st 2015 um, th this is a view from the inside of 414 Hill Street looking towards my property um, as of October 2014. Okay, I'm not understanding what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying Sorry, here. Why are we is there a before and after? Yes. Okay. Before is on the top. Okay. After is on the bottom. Okay. It's basically from the same vantage point. The one in the middle is when I was cleaning out the garage. Mm. That's basically the exact same. I'm standing in the okay, same so place looking the at the trees. Yeah. Okay. Before when the trees were there and after now the trees are not there. Is this through a screen or something like that? Uh, that? That's through a screen, and the arrow is pointing to my barbecue. The, 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 um, the only reason I, I, I bring that up is that there was so, the trees were so dense, the vegetation was so dense, that you couldn't even see my house from 414 Hill Street because there was such screening. And these trees were, I don't know, 40, 50 feet high. They were very mature trees. They've been there for quite some time. Just as a point of reference, um, because you know this is coming, uh, we're not an enforcery board. That's okay. really the building department's responsibility. If there was some tree removal done inappropriately, um, I would bring that con that, that concern. I did. I went d directly to them. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Okay. And they said that this was something that you would that I should talk to you about. So <laughs> if we get to a point where we are in agreement with an application process. I see. And if there seems to be some removal mm -hmm. or uh, trees that were uh, erroneously moved, um, part of the, the approval process, if we get to that point, would be a landscape plan. I see. And as part of that landscape plan, uh, replacing anything that was removed. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Any, any further public comment? Okay. Um, so we're at a standstill uh, with the application here. Um, at this point, we, uh, if your recommendation, what you wish us to do, you will, of course, do adjourn until the next meeting until you see if we have another board member who is in agreement with moving forward or uh, has a favorable uh, uh, decision to move forward with the certificate of appropriateness. Or are you preparing yourself to come up with a, uh, uh, an alternative, uh, meaning taking consideration what two board members feel is uh, a perfect opportunity to do alterations or additions to the rear of the existing structure? I would like to hear uh, um, Mr. Brady's position okay. on it. Uh, so you're asking, I, I, board, you're right. asking this board to adjourn until the next meeting? Yes, I, I would like to move forward. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn until our next meeting. I make a motion that we approve David Cardelli or 
414 Hill Street, request to adjourn to our next meeting. Is there a second? I second the all motion. In, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next Aye. application, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Heisman. As for the comments of my neighbor, do I need to address them now? I guess when we get to that phase, I can address them. I'm sorry? The comments of my neighbor. Correct. Yeah. I can correct. address them at that time to get to that point. Okay. That's correct. All right. Thank you. And if you have a landscape plan in mind, Obviously, you're still at a point where you don't have a favorable vote process, but I would in, in, uh, definitely communicate with your neighbor and see if there's a reasonable resolution before coming here. Okay. Uh, next application is Roger Felderman. Felderman on South Main Street. Good evening, board members. Zach and Bill. I, I have to recuse myself because I'm the neighbor. Is this Dolberbound? Yes. I, I got notice, so I have to recuse myself. Okay. Do you? Yeah. Don't I? Kurt, I don't no. think so. You don't have a financial interest. Yeah. No. For okay. <laughs> I, I did get one. It's okay. So if you have not received no, we, we if you're not, uh, <laughs> Do you one feel you can be? Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me, please. We can't hear uh, if you feel, do you feel you can be um, yes, uh, open-minded and okay. yes, we don't have a problem. So, uh, I have a few documents for the file, the affidavits of mailing and posting, some additional photos of the structure, and I have some additional plans so that oh, we can just add them over. We, I, I know. Um, we can really get um, technical, or you could just get, tell us the elements, okay. give us the... the uh, about two years ago, I was in front of this board. I got an approval for, uh, for basically uh, in the southern side of the building, uh, existing building, which has a new addition to it, a contemporary addition, to build about a 600 square foot addition on top of that, that would incorporate an elevator, basically, for the Felder bombs. Uh, to access the second floor uh, master bedroom. Uh, they never went ahead with that uh, approved uh, plan, set of plans. At the time, uh, one of the board members, Mr. Brady, made a comment that he would wish that the uh, addition at the top was more in line with the older sections of the structure rather than the newer contemporary portion of the building. So I'm in front of your board, basically, uh, eliminating that 600 square foot addition, uh, introducing uh, 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 basically a tower that uh, yeah. uh, incorporates the elevator more in line with the original architecture of the structure and the building uh, that is more historic uh, in nature. And uh, that's about it. Okay. Um, same, uh, same materials being used? Same materials, same, okay. same uh, uh, texture, same uh, height. Uh, same lines of uh, eaves and, uh, s and, and setbacks, uh, basically uh, in line with the original architecture. Any public comment on the application? Modest uh, change, I don't see anything out of keeping. It's well within the, what's the matter? I hand the papers in with you guys, I'm sorry. What, papers? what? That papers I just gave you has something that I need. Was my agenda was on there? Oh. No. Okay. All right. I'll get it for you later. You need another agenda? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. um, Jeff, any issues? Um, n no. I mean, <laughs> the, the, no. I, I have also the original. No, no, no. Uh, Susan, no, 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 no. Uh, Susan. I have no, no objection, and it would depend on me. Just, I have no objection. Justine, there's no public yeah. comment. The application is located in the historic district, as you're aware. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. Therefore, it requires written decision by council. Uh, council will have that written decision at our next meeting. Any questions? Motion to close for written decision by council. I make a motion that we close the application of Roger Felberbaum on South Main Street for written decision by our council. I second the motion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. And a final historic application for this evening. It's a Charing Cross day. LLC. Gary Hartman, um, Charing Cross LLC. And we are uh, proposing to construct driveway gates at uh, 159 Main Street. I'm just just so that we can. I mean, I so I see the design. There's panelization underneath there, correct? Correct. 
So there's no transparency underneath. Not underneath. This is a, a picket on the on the top. What is the height between the panelization from the ground floor? The dimensions are on. I understand that we're building records. So I'm just trying to get you on record and let me know what those dimensions are. It is five feet of panelization and three feet of picket. Okay. So your percentage of transparency would be less than 50%, correct? Correct. So this board has uh, has consistently required that there be a minimum of 50% uh, transparency for driveway gates. Uh, the purpose of that is so that it doesn't look so stockade and that there is a uh, sight through. And, uh, it gives it more of a um, uh, uh, inclusive rather than exclusive appeal from the street. I do understand that. Okay. Um, what I would like to say, and I would like the board's consideration, and that it's a very unique property in its location. It's located in the Village Business District. Um, across the street from the driveway entrance is a loading dock. And um, I know because after being there 7 o'clock in the morning for about 300 days, every morning, any, anywhere between 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the morning, the sanitation trucks are across the street and they pick up the garbage. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, there's deliveries. So we feel that um, after a lot of consideration and design, in the design of these gates, we've taken the pickets from the picket fence that we replaced all around the property. We incorporated that. The panels came from the design of a garage that was on the back of the property. The posts are modest and they match the posts that are up on the flat roof of the house. Um, and we've also um, taken the public into consideration by keeping the entire Main Street and Jagger Lane size of the property in total view. We haven't blocked that. This part here is not blocking the view of the house at all. And I think it would provide some a little bit more of a buffer from what happens across the street for the family that will be living there. You know, for a long time, that hasn't been a family living there. It hasn't been a residence. Because you're, in the village, be. because you're probably in the village district and there's a lot of activity. That's kind of a little bit of the issue when you purchase within the business district. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. We don't put up a, st a stockade fence to resolve well, this that. this is not a stockade right. fence. Okay. Is that what you may mean? May, yeah, may, may I ask a there question? Yeah, I, I wanted to ask exactly that. So to the, um, as, as you're facing the driveway, there's a stockade fence that is about three feet or so off ground level. Yeah, the berm is the, there's a berm. It's about approximately three feet high. Okay, and so where is this <coughs> gate going to be? Uh, how is it going to be laid out? And at what point does it either meet or below the stockade? Um, because I think that has a relevance to just looking at the gate in its isolation. So in other words, there, there's a berm that has a stockade fence that is already between the stockade fence is about how high? Uh, six, six feet. feet. So six you, feet. you have about nine feet of mass. Right. Stockade. Okay. And, and, now, and now you want to put a, a, a panel panel facade I'm not, I'm not in terms of the driveway gate? I'm not, I'm not saying yeah, uh, proving it. Well, so I would have issue with it. Would, I would have issue moving forward with the, with the amount of panelization that you're presenting before the board especially considering the, uh, the remaining portions of the uh, fence that are currently is that Is that pertaining uh, specifically to 50% of visibility or not, or are you judging what it's going to look like next to a stockade fence? And do you know how far it would be set back from the street? The, 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 these gates would be set back 15 feet from the street. Well, so they're set back, and that's a good question, uh, Jeffrey, well, I, about I think how it would be incorporated into the stockade fence, and that's something that we have put a lot of time into thinking about like every other part of the project and we would have to we would be transitioning from the stockade 14 feet back into this this fence well so okay. i am with curtis in saying that the gate as presented in the absence of anything else would not would not get my approval okay however what i'm saying is i would need to see that fence in relationship to the stockade and relationship to the entire property 
because you're describing something that's clear in your mind. It's not in my mind. Susan, do you have any comments? No. Do you agree, disagree? I think it, it probably should have more transparency, like everything else. Christine. I don't really have a problem with more privacy for this gate because of the location of it. It's an unusual location on Jagger Lane, right on Main Street. But I'm not voting. Okay. Is there any public comment on the application? Please step forward. Robert, I'm Robert. I'm the owner. Um, <coughs> I think that because of the unique location of this property, I don't think that this, your 50% rule, I think is what you've kind of, it's like an unwritten guideline. It's not really written anywhere, correct? <coughs> correct. Is that correct? That's right. correct. That's absolutely correct. So I don't think that, be, I think because of the unique um, characteristics of this property, being in village business, having two sides of the property bordered by a stop and shop parking lot, third side with the loading dock, that it doesn't set any precedent, uh, you know, f for you guys saying mm -hmm. that in this case, it's all right to have a little less transparency. So you can, if easily, that's your you can easily resolve that by, by uh, the portion that is actual, uh, the penalization on the bottom. In and out. Bringing some more spacing between the the, the actual vertical uh, boards, so that it still gives a, a more of a, uh, a, a transparent view, well, rather than just a front closed-in <coughs> facade. Right. The uh, the other thing that I was wondering is the reasoning behind your fifty percent rule is to you're trying to keep the property open to the public, so it's a two-sided issue. One is you know gates. One is you want to maintain the public to be able to look in and a sense of transparency, and the other is that it creates privacy. In this, in this sense, um, you know, the the I don't think it benefits the location of the gate, which we took pictures of. Doesn't benefit the public to look in to this area of the property. We took a lot of painstaking effort to keep the main street and the Jagger view very open. This is looking into the pool area. So does it does does it do pedestrians any justice in the village to be looking into the pool area of 159 Main Street? What's the driveway gate is yeah the drive as my picture shows the driveway looks directly at the pool, not the house. Driveways on Jagger Lane. So it doesn't really go by your metric, you know, your 50%, you know, the, the reason behind your 50% rule doesn't clearly apply here, in my opinion, respectfully. So the gate is really obstructing the pool view, not the house view, which is important, and we took a lot of precautions that the house remained in view. Board members, what do you feel? I, I so I don't think walking by it's good for pedestrians to look in a pool. I never do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a fairly cogent argument, sir. Jeff? So that, that's why it was thought out. You know, we weren't purposely going. We knew, we, we had heard of your 50% rule, mm -hmm. but we were hoping that these special circumstances would allow a small and, flex. And what I'd like to see is I'd, I'd like to see a visual of that in relationship to the stockade and to the front of the property. Again, what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing just the gate. And to me, it fits into the berm, the stockade fence, the opening to the uh, driveway, and then the, the fence that you have around, which you've done very nicely. I mean, the house is a beautiful house. You've done a great job. We've all complimented on right. it. Uh, and we'd like to see that finished off as nicely as possible as well. And That's still right. <laughs> very much keeping what uh, the board has been doing for years and all the time that Curtis has been here is to create an openness within the community. So uh, you've done that on the front part of the property. What about the screening on the up opposite side of the driveway to hide or to create the uh, necessary privacy you're looking for for your pool area? What do you mean by, what do you mean by that? Yeah, there is, there is, some, there is some screening there, mm -hmm. um, but uh, 
you know, a landscaping is not a full screen. And that's part of the reason we have purposefully that fence as solid to that height, because that height um, from our eye level protects the entire pool area. Whereas, this, whereas trees, you can see through trees. You can see <laughs> through trees. You can see, it's not a full screen. This village has a, a number of examples of screening that requires the type of lack of transparency that you're referring to. There's different ways you can prepare screening that it doesn't, uh, uh, you're talking evergreens, that you can pre present and, and, and lay out in that area so that you don't have the concerns of looking through the trees. I'm just saying you have alternatives. Well, you're we're, saying we're that the only, you're, you're giving me the example. We're utilizing own. both. We're using. We're utilizing a lot because in replacing the white picket fence that had been there for hundreds of years, I mean, we had the option. We didn't do anything higher. It's only this high, and to the side of the gate, there's still angled views in, and we have used landscaping to further kind of create a little privacy <coughs> where it's not. Um, obscuring the house too much but here we feel that you know let me just ask a question of our historical consultant okay. for a second right. we're talking about a we're in, still in the historic district uh, and you i'm going to use you until we're done with you yeah. <laughs> question we're honest. talking about a vista that uh, yeah. that's frequently traveled by uh mm -hmm. by people oh. walking riding bikes mm -hmm. Pretty much one of the most active uh, areas of the Southampton Village as a whole. Yes. The image of having a pretty evasive driveway gate right there in, in the middle of that, in terms of the overall appeal for the history. This, this is on Jagger, right? This on Jagger, <laughs> where the so stockade ends. Right. Yeah. This is the side of the property. Yes. And I think kind of the popular experience of wonderful house has been preserved by reconstructing the existing picket fence, which is <coughs> quite modest. And so therefore, as you drive up North Main Street, or if you turn onto Jagger, you still get the full uh, appearance of, of the old house. And so I would say this is about screening a portion of the backyard. Uh, I think this would be very different. Many times you get gates which are in the front of the mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you don't want to block that view because then you can't really see the house. Okay. I think the issue here is you have a f full open view of the house, and this is really about screening a portion of the backyard. Right? How it how it relates to the rest of the fencing, maybe a construction detail that maybe you want to see, but I think the concept is is I think well you know articulated. By the okay. In that case, I wouldn't have any issue. You have three votes. You're on. So um, it seems seems that there's no uh, anything further for us to pull. Can't find some historical issue. Um, no, uh, no. Uh, uh, you have enough votes to move forward with the application. What we'll do is we're going to close the application for written decision by council, and that will be prepared at our next meeting. Board members, you have anything further? Thank you. Thank you very much. Motion to close for written decision by council. I make a motion that we close the application of Channing across the LLC on Main Street for written decision by council for the I, I second that. All in favor. Aye. You guys are just back and forth. Please. Give me. Thank you. Thank you. Concludes our historic application for this evening. First application, non historic. Good night. Good night. Sorry. Good luck. What is the next application? Is Middle Lane. No, we could pause the race. Yes, we could pause the race. Well, wait. Oh, here. Where you going? Where is it? This is driver with the gates. It's going on. Interesting to him. Can I do a pumpkin at 11? This one. Can I go home? Yes, after this. Are you skating out? All right. I'm a girl. Actually, I can't. Oh, you're going to be here. I try. I didn't have a list of these. Are just They have to be stamped. Oh, they have to be stamped. Please. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. Yep.
I tried. <laughs> we just need three. No, no yeah. more than three. Okay. What is the transparency in the driver just being prepared? Here, I just give it a quickest presentation I think I've ever done if I can get this all done. Mm. Look to the end. <laughs> That's what it looks like now. That's what we're proposing. Uh, wood. <laughs> okay, you know, there you go. Material okay. that's being used. Wood, white. White. Any pill any uh, lanterns on the Yes, pillows? lanterns on top to match with existing across the street. This is part of a family home confused. Is it fro is frosted, not frosted. correct? Correct. It is frosted. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Transparency. Is there any public comment on the application? Anything further from the board? No. And again, just for the record, the transparency percentage was uh, it's three and a half inches uh, space between. Thank you. You're motion to approve. Make a motion that we approve the application of 201 Maple Park Road. I didn't even introduce the myself. Gates. Melissa Dedovich, Baconic Environmental. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Next application, please. Um, Southampton Meadow Lane, LLC. Is the applicant present? Who's representing? Yeah. Applicant present. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn the application of Southampton Meadow Lane LLC. Is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next application, please. Mark Curti on Henry Street. Hello. Hello. Uh, to Captain Hanley's in. I'm proposing to um, take down a one-bedroom cottage. It's the second second house. Excuse me. Your name. Mark Curry. Tearing down the accessory structure, you're replacing with a new pool house, correct? Yes. Single story? Yes. The material being used in, in uh, yes. compliance yes. as well as uh, in uh, keeping with the current style and vernacular of the house? Yes. I couldn't see where the driveway is. Uh, yeah, but where is this a Christine, you have any comments? No, I've looked at this. Okay. No issues? No issues? No. Could, could you point out the access to the quote garage on this Newton? No, there's actually a, you see it in the plans, there will be the garage door facing the street. This will face the street. How far is that set back yeah. from the street? Oh, that has to be. That has to be a hundred feet. This is the this is the old picture right here. So, it's just the, yeah. we'll give it to that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, it's coming yep, in. You can give it. Stamp it in. Okay. No, this is the entry. Gravel driveway. Okay. That's the side yard. Yeah. So you got set back. What was your question? My question. What, you're not understanding what? She's not understanding the access. In the rear, you have a new Belco door off the rear of your garage. That's for the basement. Oh, okay. It's a basement in your garage. The pool house. Yes. That's an interesting concept. You have any questions about what? that? There's a basement in the garage. It's half. It's about 10 feet. No. Mm -hmm. Jeff. No, I, I notice you, you're reducing the footprint. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Christine, anything? <laughs> so. yep. Any public comment on the application? I'm sorry, everyone's getting loopy. It's after 7, yeah, 11 o'clock, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep it focused. After 11? Nothing, nothing further from the public. 
Motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the application of John um, okay. Curti on Henry Street. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next application, please. Good luck. Thank you. Josh Huberman, yeah. Bishop Lane. Is this person here? Oh, yeah. Good evening, board Good evening. members. Give me one second, sure. just two signatures. In. Sure. Good evening, board members, Mr. Studenmaroth, Monica Navia for the applicant, Josh Guberman at 136 Bishop's Lane. I'd like to at this time submit the affidavit of posting, of mailing, as well as the owner's endorsement. Thank you. Thank you for the color rendering. This is the driver gets to be post? Yes. Okay. Um, there Two sets, and both of them are identical. Um, yes, yes, yes. Two, two sets of gates, correct. Two, I thought you meant two photos. That's yes, okay. Two sets of gates. The <laughs> panelization on from the ground forward, it, uh, ground up, is approximately how much? Um, let's see. Um, seven feet. 10 inches. The spacing between the uh, slats are approximately three inches? Yes. The, the gates made that uh, material that the gate is being uh, made? Is it metal? Is it wood? It is. Um, here, I have some examples. I'd like to also submit. Um, it's that powder coated. Powder coated metal. Powder coated metal, yes. Okay. Will there be any lanterns proposed for? The pillars. Um, no. No lanterns. The amount of transparency is fine. I don't have any issues with the application is submitted. Uh, Jeff, do you have any issues? Nope. Fine. Susan. No. Christine. No. Any public comment on the application? Motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the application for the driveway gates <coughs> of Josh Guberman on Bishop Lane. The two I two driver gates. Oh. Two, two driver gates. I second the motion. All in favor? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. It's full presentation ready, but I'm sorry? appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> oh. No pictures at all. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. I discovered the easel. <laughs> Next application, please. 65 First Street Lane, LLC. Yeah. Good afternoon. May Ron McDonald, Connolly Architects. Please tell me you have smaller plans. I'm sorry, sir. Please tell me you have smaller plans. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Been here long enough. Just for the record, I haven't had lunch and dinner. So. <laughs> um, or breakfast. No, breakfast ahead. Exactly. I had my coffee. Coffee, coffee. yes. Mm -hmm. That is. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, what we're doing, this is a house that I, that this board approved back in 1999 when I designed it. It was many years ago. What we're doing here is essentially is changing all the windows as per the new owner. Uh, we're adding we're adding about 520 square feet of habitable space in the rear of the house. Basically taking a, a screen porch, turning it into a living space, adding another screen porch in the rear. In the front, what you're looking at, Mr. Highsmith, is Basically, the front of the house. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The front of the house. We're also adding a yep, covered entrance. I have pictures of the existing house. Somehow, back in '99, we forgot to put cover on this front entry, so we're adding a 
metal roof, yeah. copper roof, to be specific. Mm -hmm. and yeah, can you supply that? that sure. Piece of I only have one copy. It is. So, yeah, we're changing the windows basically from a, uh, all double hongs would be replaced by double hongs, going from eight over ones to four over ones. The current owner wants to sort of make the interior flavor a bit more transitional. Uh, we're also getting rid of the diamond uh, windows on the right side of the front elevation, replacing them with the double hungs, four over ones, kind of making it more, a bit more consistent. If you look at the existing pictures, uh, there's uh, different types of windows in there. So, Also, another thing we're doing, two half, half moon windows on the gambrel and walls, we're replacing them with uh, oval windows. Um, maintaining the basic character of the I house. had me until you said that. <laughs> I'm sorry? You literally had me until you said that. <laughs> Why, Why the oval windows? Why? That's what the owner requested. I personally didn't like the uh, half moons. Oval windows are a bit more traditional. You don't see too many half, half moons. Gambrels, today's gambrels. Unless Zach has an issue with it. It's not an historic district. <laughs> no way. And we're also painting the existing siding. Again, as for the owner, I have color samples. It's not an historic district. Very good. Answer my question. I like that you're sampling the window, windows um, for the most part. The oval window, you have more of a detail. You have a photo, you have something, an example of that. So I'm looking one dimensionally. It looks a little oval windows, I don't have a picture, Mr. Highsmith. Uh, I think we have seen enough. I mean, this is. Yeah. Not, I, don't, I don't think it's out of ordinary. Okay. Seriously. And you're putting a proposed skylight in the front, correct? For the staircase. We are, yes, yes, sir. We're put, uh, the reason for that is again the design back in '99 by the same architect uh, neglected to put any light going into the uh, service entry, service stairs. I'm sorry. So it is very dark inside the house. We are adding a skylight in the front. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's putting a covered porch. And are you keeping? I see in the front that there's uh, canvas. Are you, uh, the canopy. Are you keeping the canopies? No, we're getting rid of moving those. Yes, well. sir. Yes, sir. It's so non-functional it right now. It's kind mm -hmm. of a changing the front door. Rusted. Doesn't operate properly. Yeah. yeah. Just the front page. And by the way, this is a flag lot, so none of these improvements are visible from the street whatsoever. All right, um, you know what? There's a lot going on, it's a lot of details late in the evening. Sure. Um, I think this board needs a little time to reflect. And, mm -hmm. uh, I also would like to have our other board member. Who is an architect as well, and who has insight, especially experience in this field? Right. Really would like to hear his uh, opinion on this as well. Okay. Sure. Uh, board members, uh, Jeff, you have any issues or comments? No, I'm, I'll defer to you in terms of uh, yeah, pushing it off to the next session. Okay. Changing the front door significantly. That that would be fine with me too. Okay. Uh, uh, Christy. No, I have no more comments. It looked like time to look at this. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good. Any public comment on the application? Motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. I'm sorry. You're, you're allowing us some time to get ourselves okay. uh, together, correct?
Yes. I'm ask and request that this uh, application be adjourned for us. Yes, right. please. So motion to adjourn. Uh, make we make a motion that we adjourn. A motion five. that we approve the applicant's request to adjourn. This one I'll take in. We'll say that. We <laughs> be careful what you ask for. To We're trying not to. 65 towards Nick Lane. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next application, please. John Street. Roseanne. No, it's uh. John Street. It's it? six. Yeah. Amy Dietrich. Yes. Yeah, Jim and Amy Dietrich. No. 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 Confirm. Roseanne. Yeah. Roseanne. <laughs> Forty-five John Street. Yeah. Okay. Um, just to do so. Yes. I'm submitting the affidavit of posting and mailing. This is for renovation of an existing accessory structure. For you have smaller Street. plants? I have one half size set. Sorry, I didn't bring multiple copies. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. We're not showing you any footprints. Yeah. We're basically slightly. I'm so, it's okay. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, no. That's fine. Isn't it? Oh. You wrote on my paper? This is mine. Oh, okay. This is that for me. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, we're not really changing the footprints at all. Uh, we're really just changing the roof line slightly. So we have seven foot doors in this room. Um, it's an existing pool house, essentially, as use. Uh, there's photos there of the existing yard. Um, elevation show a slight change in the eave height so that we can get normal size doors, essentially. <coughs> That's like six foot four doors. And we want to increase the amount of glazing towards the pool and also slightly raise the eave height so we can get seven foot doors. Do you have to get a variance? Uh, oh, because it was pre existing, you didn't have to. We didn't have to. Didn't okay, that's it's good. existing non compliant. Yep. It's pre existing not performing, so they didn't have to get it. Well, that's the new one, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's right next to it shows the existing. Proposed, yes. Yeah. Existing, proposed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, this, this. Are you increasing the amount of non conformity? Yeah. Eve is going up a few inches, yes, eight inches. So, so wouldn't that require you to. I asked. And I asked in the building department today, so I, do, I have no answer, but I did ask because I noticed that. They told us we had to come here. That, that may be true, but it doesn't necessarily mean it didn't require that, that you get a variance because you're increasing the amount of nonconformity. I don't have an answer to that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. another department, and that's the building department's requirement to determine that. I'm not in a position to do so, and I don't want to step outside of We're already being accused of stepping outside of our boundaries. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. rather than guess, let, allow us to get clarification necessary to make sure. I think that these changes that you're making are within keeping. I don't find any issues or concerns about the, the aesthetics. I think there will be no issue. The challenge I have is has to do with uh, uh, process and procedure okay. and making sure that we have standing to move forward and give, granting an application. Okay. Okay. Um, Christine, you have any issues about the? No. You have any issues about the pr proposed project excluding the uh, question of our standing? No, no, no. Any public comment on the application? So it, we don't have any issue other than we want to make sure that we're in, you know, we have standing to move forward with the application as submitted. Okay. Okay. So how do we follow up with this? So you you're going to, re next, re next meeting, we will, we will uh, uh, reach out to the building department just to get clarification. Um, it would be my recommendation that they give us written commentary that they uh, uh, have no issue or if they have it, uh, determined that either A, you do or you do not need to go further to another board to get some type of relief. Okay. okay. Um, so you're asking this board to adjourn so we can prepare that, correct? Yes, please. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn into our next meeting. I make a motion that we approve the applicant Roseanne Kamaniak and John Street request to adjourn to our next meeting. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next application, please. Thank you. John and Amy Dietrich. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> name for the record, please. I'm Robert Fisher, builder Robert and Fisher. agent. Uh, I just want to submit. 
I'm sorry, Pastor. We really put you to work tonight. I'm sorry. What? We really put you to work tonight. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Uh, oh, you so did. Survey. I know you have it. You can super size. Thank you. Thank you. So, proposed um, a single driveway gate entry, two, uh, two feet eight by two feet eight columns, and then uh, tied, um, and then automatic entry. Uh, what is the spacing between the pickets? Could I look at the photo for a second? Sure. That I gave them the originals before I made my own copies. Okay. Uh, the spacing of those pickets are about an inch and a half apart. The okay. bottom, the bottom portion of that gate, is a, uh, approximately two feet six. Okay. Um, I don't know if you heard the last. Yeah, it's below. It's below fifty percent. Yeah. So probably the board, unless there's some consideration you wish to present before the board, that to. Uh, Look past the fact that it's something that we've asked other applicants to do. Well, no, the portion that is solid, that's it's below. Less than it's less than fifty percent. Yeah. So yes. we're looking for fifty percent. This is fifty percent. This is yeah. less than. That's less than fifty. I, I get that's that. I'm, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the trans. <laughs> the spacing between your lap, your slats. Yes. We normally ask for three percent spacing. I'm sorry, three, three, three inches. inches. Three inches. Three, three inches. Inch space. I'm so I'm tired. I'm sorry. Three inches. Three inch spacing on yes. that. Uh, I'm sure we can accomplish that. The only thing that I would like to address is that the position of these gates, I mean, there's no fencing. So there's only privet hedge going around this property. At the, unfortunately, how this house is positioned, you ha going down pheasant close, mm -hmm. and the driveway is positioned there. So every car basically going down pheasant close will practically slam right into that as far as their headlights are concerned and the driveway in itself is offset from the house so it's blocking no views of the house the only thing that is there is the garbage cans and the backyard so I understand the understand what you're saying um, it's an unfortunate um, position that you're in challenge we have is that we still have to uphold we can open the, the slots to three we inches no be, problem it would be respectful that we do so and um, that's something you can present at the next uh, next meeting could I make a suggestion if approved so we can at least start construction and um, with argument's sake we will make the the slots three inches apart are you a licensed architect? He just left. He just messed up for you. So Wait, I, I call him on his cell phone, get him back here. Yeah, yeah well, we could that not, unless you're a licensed architect and you're even capable of making an adjustment on the plans that will indicate what the spacing is, we couldn't accept it. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, these are architectural plans, so you wouldn't be able to. You would need to, if they were architectural plans, then you would be able to make the written corrections. These are photos. Right. There's no way for me to determine that. It would be something more substantial as part of the record. So you will need architectural plans on gates? Mm -hmm. We don't need them. What you're saying is that you're increasing the spacing. Right. For me to even consider allowing you to do so today, it would have to be a, a actual rendering where a licensed architect could come in and make the necessary corrections by right. hand. Or, so you're saying bring Maybe back in a corrected photo correct. of that gate. Is there something even further that I could just write no. so you don't have to come back again? No. If, if I could just add one thing to underscore that. I'm particularly concerned with seeing <clears throat> how this gate is going to look. Because on that street and all those streets, uh -huh. uh, particularly on uh, Pheasant Close South, right. there's not a single gate. There's okay. only one on 43 West, okay. and there are two or three on uh, on east to west. It's yeah, yeah, no, there, there are but definitely that gates whole, in that subdivision. That whole subdivision mm -hmm. is unusual by the fact that it has columns in mm -hmm. most houses yes. rather than gates. So the look of that gate is significant because it's going to stand out among all the other houses. So 
architect or not, it's more than a technicality. I'd like to see it. Okay. Susan, you your comments? I'm, I, I would like to see what's going to happen to it. Let's see what was. I'm sorry. What? I mean, do you have a <laughs> suggestion on a different style gate? If I mean, because the homeowners are, are no, 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 basically I, I, open. I, I, I mean, it's a beautiful I, gate, but hear what was just said because I want to make sure that we. I mean, I know we're getting loopy, so yeah. I want to make sure we're present. What Jeff is saying is that this is going to present the only gate in that community in that area, and therefore, right. how is that going to impact the community? Right. Your comments are. Oh. I'm only interested in the in the spacing of the gate. And your issues are? I agree with you on the spacing of the gate. Okay, so you have spacing three members that are present here. They don't have issue with the actual existence of the gate, but the spacing. Okay? Got it. Any public comment? So you request the board to adjourn until next meeting to present yes, sir. yourself? Yes, sir. Thank you. Motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn. And Thank make you. the motion that we approve the applicant to join Amy Dietrich. Request to adjourn to our next meeting for their gates. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Next application, please. Is Old Town Crossing, John and Amy Fraser. Richard Anderson from Eric Woodward Architect. Uh, we're proposing. Plans you're submitting right now are duplicate and match. No, well, there's just yeah, David's. You have the plans. Thank you. Uh, so I just have them presented here. So we're adding uh, to the back of the house. Uh, the addition is a small kitchen addition. Uh, we're tearing off an existing porch, which the vernacular isn't the same. And we're adding a, a new porch in the back that's more cohesive to the front of the house. That's just the plan. Here. These are the elevations of the new. So the back. Um, getting rid of these old round columns. They had these round columns in the back of the house that really wasn't cohesive to the front of the house, which had this nice square columns and stuff in the front. So I'm trying to keep the vernacular the same as the front and the back. I'm also in the back, I'm getting rid of, they had a waterproof uh, a deck, or a second floor deck. Well, the client is okay with getting rid of that. So I'm gonna remove that and have uh, a nice, Porch in the back You're presenting the before us the removal of a second story deck. Yes, I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> so but that's what like you are doing. Okay, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, the, all, the majority, so the front of the facade, so that we understand. Yes. Uh, facade, front of the facade, nothing's being done. We are only adding a uh, small railing here because the, the homeowner's mother has a hard time oh. walking upstairs, so she wanted a railing. And that's the only thing that's on the property. At the rear of the property is the removal of the second story deck. Yes. It's the, uh, you're removing a portion of the rear yes. to add on a kitchen, a small kitchen. Small dining, kitchen. And the, and the With that is the removal of the second story deck. Yes. And, uh, and, a, the, and, and, the, and the, two and porches, the, which will be at the rear. Correct. That's your design. It's very simple. Board members, are there any questions? No. Susan? No. Christine? No. Any public comment on the application? Thank you for making a simple application at the end of this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Motion yeah. to approve. I make a motion that we approve the application of John and Amy Frazier at Old Town Crossing. <coughs> Is there a second? I second the All motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And our last application for this evening. Of course. I really hope this is like your driveway gates. <laughs> Good evening, board members. Mr. Studenra, Monica Navia for the applicant Quickpod Realty One LLC. I'd like to submit the affidavit of posting and of mailing at this time. Plans that you're submitting here are a match of what's in the file currently. There's been Correct. no alterations or changes. The only thing it shows the Actually, I just want to introduce this is Gary Sanders, the architect that will be describing the plans. And I just want to show the rendering as well as for the camera to see what we're proposing. The only difference from those, the small sets are it shows the match pattern of the shingles. Okay.
Or was there an issue with the application? Can you give an abbreviated for, uh, description Just of the application? Sure. Materials that are being it's used, the vernacular, and uh, does it seem just so that we can build record for the application. Sure. So please do. Uh, the house has uh, white cedar shingles with a cedar roof, uh, copper gutters and leaders, uh, six over one windows, the diamond pattern above <coughs> the front door, um, red brick chimney, and uh, round columns. Any accessory structures to go along with the application? Uh, there is a two car garage, detached garage on the back. And the garage and in is your the same materials to be used? Uh, same, mix. As, same as the as the house. Okay. Board members, any questions? <clears throat> Jeff. I would like to see a streetscape. Um, this, uh, when this house first came to us uh, for request for demolition. Uh, we made particular note of the uh, small scale of the house and its appropriateness to the, to the neighborhood and that lot in particular. Uh, this house uh, is currently maxed out to its uh, uh, envelope within the pyramid and um, it might be, I can only look at one picture. Sure. Uh, I'm not even gonna comment on the design whether I like it or not. I'd really have to see, personally, a streetscape of how that fits into all the other streets. And when I sp speak of a streetscape, it's in my mind, it's not individual pictures that I have no context. It's it's, it's one. It's continuous. Other people have done it. Uh, by example, of that rendering <clears throat> in that picture, you're probably very capable of doing it. Uh, so I'd like to hold off my opinion until. Uh, I see it in relationship to the streetscape. Christine? I like it. I think it's good. I like it. Susan? I have no objections to it. I have no objections to the house. I think uh, I think the design is in keeping. I don't find it to be um, um, that it's, um, sorry, my brain is crazy right now. It's fine. Okay. Any public comment on the application? Please step forward. Last but not least. That's fine. I am the neighbor to um, 104. I'm at 98. My name is Gloria Joseph. Yes, ma'am. Um, this house, as rendered, would be about three times as large as the house that was taken down. Uh, that house was about six, <clears throat> 1,650 square feet. Uh, this is 3,300 square feet with uh, 5,000 is what's suggested. Um, my house on the south border, <clears throat> all my living area is right here. And so the driveway would be on my side. My pool, my, uh, just the entire living space is here and it will be greatly impacted. The, the plans uh, call for a porch on that side of the house. They call for the back of the house to be, um, a porch. The, the porch will be ground level, correct? Correct. Uh, but mainly I ask that not such a big house go up. Um, the entire house has now been demolished, as I'm sure you're well aware of, including the garage. So I would ask for the maximum amount of setback on the garage. And um, just, I can't imagine on Lewis Street with all of its fairly simple homes, <coughs> this house for scale and the way it will look in the neighborhood, I have a real issue with it. Thank you. Um, one of the one of the comments that was made by a neighbor is by the neighbor. It has to do with privacy concerns. You know, this board you've been hearing enough to know there are some concerns about privacy. Is there or have you proposed uh, a landscape plan? Uh, there is a site plan on the last part of the... So the site plan includes... Yeah. And it does show privet wrapping the whole property. What is the height of the privet? Um, that, that can be discussed with the neighbor if there's a certain height that um, they would like to see. Well, the neighbor um, had some objection to the house because of impact. 
therefore maybe the house is under the allowable uh, square footage a question that had to do with with, with uh, uh, impact okay. so the impact is yeah. privacy concerns mm -hmm. so do you have are, are you in any way uh, preparing yourself to either either assist or or, uh, or increase your amount of uh, uh, privacy or your amount of screening so that the neighbor is not going to be impacted um, I don't think you could screen it more than it is now because the evergreens on her side are about 20 something feet high um, also we agreed when we were doing this I you know I know um, that this application wasn't contingent on this house but we made note that when we did get the uh, permit to demolish it that we were going to build a white house very similar to what was there um, we're keeping the garage and the driveway are staying in the same <coughs> spot. Um, the porch is not wide enough really to do anything on it. It's just more aesthetics to walk around to kind of go in the character of what you, was there. You know that it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable request of the neighbor to, request, to ask the applicant who is increasing the volume of their home to add more screening. But you couldn't add more screening. The screening is literally 20 or 30 feet high there. I mean, it's, it's huge. So you're asking us for to go into his uh, site visit to make sure that the screen is uh, We have pictures situation. of it in the file. I saw nothing to indicate that there was enough screening that would, that would. Uh, in, uh, in the demo file, there were a lot of And is the pictures. screening you're referring to hers or your, the hers. other property? Well, hers and ours, it's on the borderline. You couldn't put more screening because the driveway is on the property line. Yeah, I, I don't see it. We don't have a line here. Are you referring to the rendering? No. No, no. I, we have, I mean, if on that, on the north side of the mm -hmm. property, the trees are, you couldn't put more trees there. I mean, it's totally screened. You can't see her house, and she cannot see this house. And the I, I don't have those photos in file. The driveway the driveway's not going to move, What's and the garage is going to stay there. We're not going to change any of that. Okay. Um, so is there something you can propose, like a landscape plan will indicate height and specimens of trees there on that side that will and also a photo that will show so that we as a board can get render a decision based on the facts and not just I think or um, what your presentation is it should be substantiated with facts. But didn't you guys do a site visit? Site before? visit alone you had a neighbor here that had some concerns. I, did you see that? It does seem heavily screened to me. It's huge. I mean, you, you can fit another tree there. I mean they're literally 30 feet high as yeah. high as the house. I mean I couldn't screen it any more than it is. It's totally screened. Ma'am, um, the rec if you step forward. You're the neighbor most impacted. You had some concerns about the privacy. The, the, the uh, uh, respondent here says that there's enough screen, screening there that should be more than enough, more sufficient. That than you is before. all my screening I would like to add. Um, the concern for me, more than anything else, is where the livability of the house is going to be. And considering that all of my living is done essentially on the southern border, I object to having the driveway there and the garage. So the driveway the there light. is not something this board can, little, can determine. It's there now. So we're that's changing. that's they're not changing that the, re the repositioning. I appreciate that. And the garage, which was really very close to my property, is now done or gone. And so I would ask that when the detached garage goes back up, that it be set back as far as possible because as I've said, my swimming pool is there. And right now I'm really living communally with this next door property because of the driveway and all the activity that goes on. And it seems like... I don't see the garage going any further back. It's 10 foot, 10, 10 foot from the... Not barrier. the back, but the side. The side. The side property. The south. Border. It's I'm north sure. border. Which is five foot. Well, my point is I don't want it to go any closer and whatever the maximum setback is with the garage. But the fact of the matter is, if I might just take one little step back here, okay. um, the house on the corner um, has the back of its property <coughs> facing um, the northern edge of 104. I would suggest that if the orientation of the house could be changed at all. No, no that's not before the board, and that's not our, our board's uh, <coughs> position to reposition the house as it stands. Um, there, there's, these are the elements that you have 
uh, we have jurisdiction okay. to discuss. You discuss privacy concerns or issues, especially in areas of your living. Right. If you're saying and suggesting <coughs> that he or the applicant should supply more screening for uh, or additional screening to uh, to satisfy your privacy concerns, that's something we can look into mm -hmm. and see if that's something that can be mitigated. It's Other than that, the position I, I want to make sure we can go too far in conversations about placement of the garage, replacing the, the driveway, or even replacing or repositioning the house. I don't want to go in that direction because right. that's not really within our purview. We're going to talk about right. what the screening the as, it, as it currently stands. It's all my screening, and I would love to have any screening additionally added that will help mitigate the noise, any uh, motion detector lights on that side of the home, and just having a much larger facade ever so close to my own home. This is all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Mike's never been re un unreasonable for us to ask for a landscape plan. I, I cannot put one more shrub in there. It's literally 30 foot overgrown on both sides of the property. It goes right up to the driveway. Where would you put it? And why would you put it? Why, like, your, her whole house, you cannot see. She cannot see this house. Well, I mean, well, you're, then, then present it. Present it. Show us. There's nothing to present. I can't put any more landscape. Then you, well, Michael, I mean, we, we, we run into this all the time. We're not asking, we're not saying to do it or not do it. All we're saying is present a landscape plan, show us in details as part of, as part of the file that either it can be done or if it can be done, this is how we can I do th it. I think Christine's driven by it and seen that, that it's an overgrown 30 foot evergreens down, and she admits that. But she wants me to put more. What good is that going to do? It's not going to stop sound. Trees aren't going to stop I, I, sound. Or no one's mitigating her sound. I know, but we're wasting concerns. another two weeks to do the. I obvious. understand what you're saying. A neighbor mostly impacted had a concern, and it had to do with privacy. I know, but she's it, can, she's in, she's worried about the driveway, which has been there which for a hundred years. Which we discussed. The the garage, which we discussed, which is actually moving over two more feet. And you're asking me to give you a, a so the, the driveway we discussed with her and told her we were not going to we were not going any further in discussions. We talked about the garage. She brought the garage up and said that's not something that will be discussed before this board and anything that we, we she even talked about positioning of the house and we refused to hear that. We're talking about screening. That's all we're referring to. Right I, I agree with you on every other case, but where would I put? It? I think this is very reasonable. I we're not. I mean, council. Yes. We'll show that, that we can't put it anywhere. I mean, this has been going on since September. This application has not been going on since September. Sure Your demo, app, that's a different application. You had an application for demo. But I thought we did a site, we, we, also, we spoke about this when we were doing the demo that you guys did a site inspection. Site inspection, okay. and that's, a neighbor, neighbor, neighbor mostly impacted, didn't come before us to say, I have issue concerns about the house. I understand that, but common sense. Council, would you agree that that's a reasonable request? I don't know what you want me to yeah. do, though. We'll show no that it can't be done, and we'll provide whatever makes the neighbor most impacted feel more have a conversation with it. That's fair. I, mean, I have a conversation Yeah, we'll talk with, with her Anyone who hasn't been to the site should go and look and see mm -hmm. the screening. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I've been to the site. Then. And it, well, then it's clear. I mean, it's crystal. I mean, these trees are 30 mm -hmm. foot high. You cannot get any can, higher. Can just have <laughs> something for the file that will indicate that so we don't have, I, I mean, one of your w issues before was making sure that we went through a thorough application, everything was done and vetted out properly. We're just trying to do the same thing. Oh, I understand that, but we, I thought we were beyond this a while ago. We're almost you know? there. We're almost there, Michael. Mike. Right. This, this, we're almost there. We'll provide that. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You request us to adjourn, correct? Correct. A motion to approve applicant's request to adjourn. I make a motion that we approve the applicant we can call the realty request to adjourn to our next meeting. I second the Call motion. in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, February, all members were here present. More board members, did you review the minutes from the meeting yes, of February 22nd? Yes, no questions, comments, concerns, errors, or omissions. Motion to approve the minutes from February 22nd, 2016. I make a motion that we approve the minutes from February 22nd, 2016. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And motion to close at 11:55 oh, meeting we'll architectural board <laughs> review in historic preservation. Is there is there a I second? I second the motion. She's been second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good night. Oh.